Oh yeah, this is happening. Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd here at Fish's RV and if you can't tell by the look on my face, I am so excited. I've, since their inception, I've had people saying, Josh, are you ever going to show an alliance? And yes, finally, finally we're going to take a look at these things and I'm super excited about it and i tell you why. Um, this is a company that was founded on customer feedback and it was founded by people who have a long standing pedigree uh, in the RV industry. And what they did for months before they even built their first prototype is they went to like owner's rally after owner's rally and they specifically sought out counsel from full-time RVers, the people who spend the most time in an RV, who have the greatest knowledge of their everyday use, their features, their functions, and their failure points. And those were the big things that they wanted to talk about. They said, okay, where can we build a better RV? And there, uh, so basically there's so many aspects of this that were based on consumer feedback from folks like you. And as we go, I'm going to ask, you know, did they listen right? Did they get it right? Is there more that they could do? Is there something that they missed? But there's so many areas, like um, what they've done on the roof. There's a couple different things up there uh, to make something a little better, stronger, longer lasting. They're using a higher grade of fiberglass. They've got the, uh, the, the triple layered automotive paint on the nose, which admittedly is pretty common in the industry, but they didn't slip up there. Um, a major thing that they're really doing different on this one though, is what they've done with the running gear. And I have long felt personally, if you want an RV to hold up better, stronger, longer, you need to give it uh, more attention from literally the ground up where it makes ground contact. And that's what they did here. They have like a, a six point thing of, of stuff that they've done to, uh, you know, do things like prevent blowouts, to reduce shock and dampening and, 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 and jolts and things like that that get translated into the RV. And recently new for 22, they've updated from single layer to double layer Asdell on the inside and outside walls. And the laundry list of sweet stuff on this one just keeps going. Um, I, I'm not even sure where to begin on this one. I'm just, I'm so glad I finally get a chance to get my hands on one of these. And there will certainly be more to come. And this is what's so fun for me. Like, I, basically my job is I get to play around with campers all day and talk to people on the internet. I've got a sweet gig. But they all do something a little bit differently. And that's what I want to showcase for you here. Like, one of the major things they're doing very different uh, is the air conditioning. Because if you look at this, you're like, uh, are those not centralized? And I actually, um, I, I have to, I really, I have to apologize. I have to issue an apology on this. Because... I felt a certain way about that. I thought that that was an inferior cooling method before I actually took the time to educate myself on it. And it's it's crazy what an education can do for a person in terms of dispelling rumors and misconceptions, you know? We're going to talk more about that AC system in greater depth when we actually get up onto the roof, though. Um, you know, actually, what we're looking at here, first and foremost, is a bit of an uncommon find. The uh, gas electric two-way fridge in an Alliance Paradigm. Most are built with a residential refrigerator. Either way, it's 16 cubic foot, or no, I'm sorry, 18 cubic foot. So keep that in mind. When you get the residential fridge, you automatically get a 2000 watt inverter that wires not only just to the fridge, but to multiple outlets in the RV. When you get the gas electric fridge, normally you would lose that. But in the case of the RV that we're looking at here today, which has also been outfitted with their solar package, you regain that inverter function, which is kind of cool. So this one right here, um, built for, I'm gonna say some light boondocking because this thing uh, with all of the lights and all the juice that you could use on it, even with the factory solar package, you could overpower it. Now look at this, this uh, legless dinette system over here. Uh, I'm a long legged person. Like I don't, you know, I don't enjoy airplane travel, although I do a lot of that professionally now. So having something like that where I'm not constantly digging up my shins is a welcome find. And notice, this is the nerd preferred way of doing it right here. The carpetless uh, floor matching uh, slide system. And this is something, um, you know, uh, Alliance is doing, but also uh, like Montana Solitude, they have gone also to the same style of flush floor carpetless kitchen slide, getting rid of that toe kick. So that instead of standing six inches away 
from the stovetop and leaning forward to do your stuff, which works your lower back over. You end up exhausted just from cooking. You can actually belly right up to the bar and do your work now. There's just some nice things that they got going on here. Um, ah, just all the windows in the world over here on the door side, giving us amazing views of everything. And if I'm going to get a lot of windows in an RV, I know that there's some floor plans where they can't do this, but this is absolutely where I would personally uh, prefer to get them. Now, um, all these windows, though, on a hot sunny day, they're going to bake you out of the RV. So one of the nice things here is you do have some blackout roller shades that you can use to uh, blot out the sun, as it were. And now, here's another thing. You see that that is a trifold sleeper sofa. But if you're looking at it, it's like a three-seater sofa. Uh, well, remember, this is a 101 wide-body coach. That means that that could be a three-seat adult sofa and still have good size side stands on both sides, which is a tricky thing to say, by the way. Dr. Seuss got nothing on Uncle Josh. Now, if I'm going to be picky, I, I'm not a super fan of the outlets being located down there, but there's a reason they're down there. There's not really another better place they could put them because that's storage. So it's not like they could mount it uh, up here a little bit higher and a power tower would crush against the wall. And they are laminating the rear wall. Side walls, la uh, a rear wall, they are double Asdell um, laminated walls. So basically the walls are, you know, aluminum and composites. There's not really anything in the wall that can rot. Now, what I didn't say is the RV is leak proof and waterproof. Be careful of people who start making promises like that because that's something that frankly they can't uh, back up. But uh, neither here nor there. Now, straight across from us here, We've got the electric space heat and Tootsie Toaster. That's a nice wide one. The, the size of that, by the way, doesn't really determine the, uh, the, the heating ability of it. Now, if you're looking at this, that is a sweet no neck wrecker entertainment center right there. And that is a smart TV that is 4K. So, uh, you know, if you, uh, you, you have good internet at a location, you can enjoy some nice high def streaming entertainment. But once again, everything has a shape and a character. Everything, nothing is just flat and boring. But if you're looking at it down here, you see there's that funny little orange sticker. You're like, what does that tell me? And are those handles in front of the fireplace? And, and why, yes, people who didn't ask, those are, in fact, handles in front of the fireplace. Because they decided they weren't going to waste an ounce of space. Nerdism number 37. You got yourself a big old hidden bucket storage trunk. That would be awesome game day Monopoly. My daughter has recently just insanely gotten into uh, Monopoly. But it's funny because... Um, she has the Pokemon version of Monopoly, which, as we all know, is the exact same game, but she refuses to play another version because she, quote, won't know what's going on. Okay, so one of the very few, what I feel is a miss, and but the thing is, this is an easy fix, both for Alliance, uh, maybe in the future, um, but also for us as owners, or we could assist you with this as a dealership here at Bish's RV. That TV does not pivot. It is a flat-mounted TV. Now, when I'm sitting over here, I am fully just sitting at the sofa lounging. It's not bad. It's not like I'm really losing a ton of the television or something. And especially if I'm on, you know, like more of a, a lean back kind of situation right here, leaning on the armrest or with my head on a pillow, I've got full view of it. So it's not bad, but there's like, there's space back there. And it's just, it's an, I don't know, to me, to me, that feels like a textbook example of what should be a pivot out television. I guess we'll, you know, you leave me a comment. Tell me if you, th what, it, it, should it stay fixed? Should it be a pivot screen? Like, what should be done with that? And then we can feed that back to Alliance. And again, they are a consumer-driven brand. If enough people say, yeah, no, that really should be that way, I'm willing to bet they'll do something about it. Um, we are carpetless. We are ventless. Um, in the flooring in the main deck, sometimes in the upper deck, uh, depending on how the engineering works out, where the ducting is able to be run, they are forced to do a floor vent or two or something like that in the upper deck. But typically, they don't do a whole lot of them, but they gave us a whole lot of kitchen. And I almost feel like taking a riff off an ACDC song, you know? Instead of a whole lot of Rosie, maybe be like, whole lot of cooking, whole lot of kitchen, something like that. I don't know. It feels like there's something there. Regardless, what we are looking at, um, pretty common in this big class, pocket screwed cabinetry, hardwood cabinet doors, soft close hidden hinges is a nice little touch on here. There's some other people doing that, but not all of them. 
Um, something that a lot of brands have really started diving into, like I see it very commonly here. I see it in Cedar Creek, in um, Montana, in Solitude. The symmetry kitchen kind of situation where everything balances left to right, especially on both sides of that. So look at those easy reach outlets. And they're in the sidewall. That is something that is very difficult for manufacturers to do to the tune that most manufacturers just will not give you power outlets in the sidewall of a slide out like that. Another thing that's showing you is you cannot do that on a thinner wall. That has to be a, a, a little thicker wall to be able to maintain wiring code right there. Now, what is your take on this? Some people love a breeze window overlooking a stovetop. Some people hate it. Some people want no window. Some people want a window that doesn't open so you don't have to clean the screen. What is the correct way to do this? Is there a correct way? It seems like everyone has their own kind of uh, idea on it, you know? Did you notice, by the way, a big four burner insignia stove uh, and just all kinds of cabinet space, including that little mini bonus drawer down below. Now, remember, either way, you're getting 18 cubic foot of uh, cold storage, regardless of whether you get the gas electric two-way fridge or the uh, residential fridge. Uh, the size of the, the capacity of the fridge doesn't change at all. That little backlit accent panel in there is interesting. That's a cool little phone charging station. Awesome little Keurig coffee bar right here, and they put the outlets where they're easy to get to. Now, personally, I prefer outlets like this on the wall, although the cords can kind of get in the way. But when they're under the overhead cabinets, there's nothing wrong with that, but sometimes the cords have a hard time reaching. It's just kind of one of those funky little things. Now, pardon my footprints. I'll get those cleaned out of here when I'm all done. And we don't charge you extra to clean the campers out before you take them home. We give them a quick little surface cleaning, by the way. I'm not going to call it a full detail. Um, but the, the biggest reason that I don't care how hard we clean something, the, uh, the first time you roll it down the road, there's going to be little bits of things that are going to rattle loose. Um, and if you don't want that to be the case, then understand that we are going to have to test tow your RV quite a bit to make sure that doesn't happen. And I personally, I wouldn't want somebody hauling my RV around that much. And they nailed this island. You know, no sharp points to jab my clumsy self. Uh, I am very inclined to do that. Everything radius very nicely. Prep space for days, even when the big farm sink over here is in use. And a full one-piece dish drying rack that if you don't want it to be one piece, you can always just fold it in half and use it as half a countertop. And then down here, it's fantastic wastebasket space. And just to show you how big this is, this is uh, like the little wire rack for the convection microwave that I forgot to tell you about. Um, just to give you an idea how big that is. And then over here, you see counter bump, one, two, three big drawers. Those could be removed. And that is actually prepped and ready inside there for an RV dishwasher, which uh, <laughs> I think is pretty cool. How tall is that slide? Hold on, we're gonna do a head check. So if I just straight walk in here, <laughs> um, you're not even seeing the whole ceiling on camera. There's my hand on the ceiling above my head. This is awesome. Now I'm not gonna do jumping jacks. I found out, like, I'm, I can't, I can't jump extremely high. But I did find out not too long ago I can jump higher than I thought I could, and I about cold cocked myself on one of these things one time. And um, I don't feel like repeating that demonstration. I can't help it. I just want to play with these soft closed doors once. I'm just, oh, I love these things. I, I don't know why. I love watching them work. That is so satisfying. Ooh, do bo bo. Chick, 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 ah. 10 bucks right now, you're thinking about Ferris Bueller's day off. I bet your paycheck on it. I ain't gonna bet mine though. Anyway, um, what are the other cool things in here? In the living room, just, a simple dimmer slider switch. So if you wanna kinda of put about halfway up, find that sweet spot, you're watching a movie at night, or you know maybe you've got a, a, a grandbaby or something on that high to bed, or adult friends, it's big enough, it doesn't have to be just about grandkids. That's one of the nice things about those wider high to beds, you can put a couple adults side by side, and they're not gonna karate chop each other all night to death, although, um, you could put a small dog in a giant bed and suddenly it becomes a small bed. I don't know the math behind it, but I know that's a fact. Now, the bathroom here is a good example of how they were willing to do things a little bit differently. 
and it still hits all the same notes. They just found a slightly different way of going about it. And I think one of the main things they created is more space around the toilet. Of course, the wide body nature of this floor plan certainly does not hurt either. That is a uh, that is a good model right there for a big booty Rudy, as for some reason I have started saying. The other thing it creates, though, is a little bit better storage here in the bathroom, like uh, by the sink. Notice again, uh, in any time they can avoid it. They avoid using floor heat ducts. There are occasionally some times in the upper deck they do need to use one. Oh my gosh. So this is an epoxy countertop, which is really cool, but that is a big stainless sink. I mean, look at my hand inside of that thing. It is that that is small by comparison. Um, XL Max Air vent fan. You see the wall controller there for it. Of course, uh, we're going to find that up here. And it really actually kind of shocks me how many big uh, high-end fifth wheels like this, that feature is not standard. I don't know. It just seems like the kind of thing you'd almost assume to be standard, but isn't always. And I mean, as long as we're going all the way on this one, I figured I'd even open the medicine cabinet. I'd look at everything. Oh, I'm so glad they put a shelf in that. Now that is awful deep. So keep in mind, you might need a long arm to reach all the way back there. That one right there, not as deep though, because it actually butts up against the pantry down in the kitchen space. Um, uh, the, uh, I was showing you all the storage here and then I kind of blocked it off with this door. Triple drawers down to the floor, plenty of Lipitor storage galore. Did not mean to Dr. Seuss the crap out of that, but there we go. Great. You know what? You could use this for two things. You could either use it as wastebasket storage or for a climb back in here and sit back in the toilet. You could use it for long legs. <laughs> um, now over here in the shower, they have height adjustable shower hardware and they actually have an, it, it doesn't take much, but just give me a shelf, a place to put some shampoos and body washes and all that. Um, it, it's just, it's all you need. Easy walk-in shower, excellent upper deck height. As you can see, my face beaming when I'm standing in the shower here. And this is um, a 300 pound rated folding seat. But as you know, I always show those down. I thought I'd show it out of the way. And it's crazy how big the shower feels when it's out of the way. Am I wrong? Now again, if you're tall, the upper deck of this is very nice and spacious, just like the slides that we saw um, downstairs. Yeah, well, I guess technically both slides downstairs, but you're really only going to be standing in the one of the two. Anyway, you might notice when we get back up here, we've got a third air conditioner. This RV has a 40,500 BTU standard air system. Triple air standard on this RV. It's uh, very, very powerful, obviously. But you might notice this one is centralized, the other one is not. You're like, what gives? So the bedroom and the bathroom are the two smallest rooms in the RV. So they share one air conditioner. So you have very little central ducting going between them. And this air conditioner is not trying to push air all the way down to the other end of the RV. So it ends up working very well. And, you know, there's only so many ways. I said a line. Oh, they like to do the bathrooms everywhere. There's only so many ways you can do a bedroom. But what I'm going to give them serious credit for here is how that window above the bed is large and it opens for airflow. A lot of people give you a Cyclops window. Very few of them actually open for air. You've got many side stands in the king bed slide. They have household and USB outlets uh, available to them right there. So there's going to be good phone charging stands. But because they stand right, people, uh, you know, again, full timers, when they got the, the customer feedback, they said, we want more room to walk around the bed. So they standardized the king with walk around space. But what's really cool about this, if you look, you could shave down the platform. You could size down to a queen if you wanted and gain a ton of space uh, around that thing. Now, what I kind of respect about this is this has a little bit of a residential kind of feel going on where it's, it, it's not so like in your face. What the? I just realized somebody put the, uh, this is a, like almost like a fitted sheet, but they put it on upside down. Uh, doesn't really do us a lot of good. So let's get that out of the way. Let's look under there. And what you're seeing right there are the uh, the two chairs that go along with the master dining table in the kitchen space. This is what I like to refer to as a two plus two dining. Um, the uh, RV, you can, uh, you know, if you want to set it up for a washer and dryer, not a combo unit. A big fifth wheel like this does very nicely getting both of those things. And notice how you've got that like laundry hamper, um, kind of bench thing next to that big dresser, which has its own hidden little, you know, um, jewelry storage or whatever you want to call it, something like that. This, by the way, also a smart TV. So, um, if you're like me and my wife, we will start watching something in the living room. 
that is appropriate for myself and my wife. And then my daughter comes upstairs from playing Nintendo and quickly we have to turn the channel. So we will migrate and um, we will trade some like leg rubs or something while watching our grown up television back in our own bedroom, which is something we could do here. Also, just like you saw in the living room, you've got dimmer switch lighting in here, which is something that really speaks to me because here's, here's a thing that happens regularly in my household. So it starts by slowly dimming the lights. Then I look over at my wife and we go to sleep because we're tired because being an adult is exhausting. Adulting, Adulting is hard. hard. Now, one of the cool things here with road mode, since it has a sliding bedroom door, um, you know, getting in and out of the bedroom, never a concern in there. And since the hallway's over here on the door side, you know, easy bathroom access, making little, you know, uh, travel potty stops, not a big deal. That's pretty normal in a floor plane like this. The question really becomes what happens when we go downstairs. And I am very pleased to report that, uh, you know, consumer driven features that I talked about earlier, it really shows itself right here because you can easily just walk right in here, whether it's the residential fridge, whether it's the gas electric two-way fridge, you can access the entire thing. Another really cool thing about these floor plans, they are designed where, let's just say 10 years down the line, you need to replace a refrigerator, you can take them out the front door. You're not going to have to like remove one of those giant windows or anything like that. And that's the extra detail I like to give you and just bam, right up front in your face, right off the nose cap, right from the start. This thing looks tremendous on the outside, but is it me or does the Alliance logo look suspiciously like the Skynet logo from Terminator? I'm not saying, I'm just saying. Um, it, it might look a little bit bulbous up front because they, they put a big radius nose cap on it that you'll get a better look at as I start panning around the uh, RV. But um, the uh, RV is also a little bit bigger. It's a 101 wide body. Now remember I said ride and handling was uh, when, when they were surveying full-time RVers, people who both parked and traveled, big constant things they talked about were um you know the uh the traveling aspects of the rv obviously the park people didn't have much to say about that they talked more about the inside of it but that shock dampening pin box and what we're going to show you uh on the suspension now pardon my battery box right there that is next to the factory battery box as well as the optional gen prep station and you can get an own in 5500 now this rv we're looking at today is outfitted with their optional uh solar package you see the 40 amp MPPT controller there next to that 2000 watt inverter. Now, the reason I really stress those letters MPPT is because it's a more effective, more efficient energy management system that uh, basically it captures some potentially lost juice, the, you know, the magic sunlight as it were, and converts it back into usable power for the battery. Now that's a gross oversimplification, but that's essentially what happens there. Um, there's very little on this RV. I personally feel the need to nitpick and none of it is like a deal breaker. It's tiny stuff, but like this baggage door, it's awesome that it's double gas strutted because it's under the bed slide up there. Um, I will admit I am kind of a fan of how Grand Design Solitude does their door where half of it splits open, half of it splits up, but it is more to, you know, manage. You're managing two things now instead of just one, but you know, it's, I mean, it's not a big deal, but I try to be fair. I try to point out little things here and there, but that's all I can find is tiny little stuff. I would prefer the docking center to be like enclosed and partitioned when it, when it's half open like that. I don't know. I just, I just feel like maybe some kind of cargo could shift around the corner, but I don't know what even could do that. So that's probably me just being ultra paranoid, but notice right here how they have that handy little uh, pull tab. Well, that is an easy access panel uh, that was inspired again by those talks with the full-time RVers. Because one of the things people said is we really wish these RVs were more easily uh, accessed for things like winterizing because I don't know about you, but you know, at my age, crawling around to get to the water heater sometimes is kind of a problem. You know, that's the kind of feedback I hear regularly. And it's true, RV designers have, um, 
made things like systems harder and harder and harder to get to over the years. So Alliance made a big, easy access panel to get to that kind of stuff, which I think is very cool. Once again, you see that big nose cap sticking out right there. Um, if you're really paying attention on the big slides, you're going to notice some little black tabs sometimes running up the sides of the slide, especially on a shallow slide like that kitchen slide. You might be going, what is that? Well, that is actually um, a, a little thing, basically just a little wipe, a, a little bump, so that the wiper seal on the slides more um, effectively flips in and out. So you don't get a seal that's only crimped halfway in, halfway out, which can be a problem. And good job, Alliance. Uh, this is something that I would have shared is uh, the location of the speakers is down here where we can hear it instead of only blowing away the neighbors. That is well done. The double magnet holdbacks on these baggage doors is also something I really like. Something I greatly dislike though is the fact that it just decided to start raining. I carried an umbrella with me all day because it was supposed to rain and then it never did. But guess what? Guess what I left inside because I didn't think I was going to need it. And I don't think you even need to guess because I think you pretty much already know. Now they have uh, what they call their benchmark chassis system here, which if you look at this, it, the drop frame starts all the way back by the door, okay? Um, because they're able to, to run other stuff down in that little cavity. But what this is going to result for us, even on one of their shorter floor plants like this, is a huge open storage cavity. This is just phenomenal. And you see, you know, that all aluminum uh, cage skeleton work going on here, motion activated lighting when the batteries are turned on anyway. I mean, if I'm being picky, it's so big. I almost kind of wish there was a couple little tie downs, but that's something I could probably easily add. Um, we do have TV hookups for the outside over here and notice how they are leaving us a little feed port down there so you can run it out from under the skirting. That is an area a lot of manufacturers miss. Now this is an LCI stable step, but it is also one of those zero gravity stable steps. And the thing about, uh, I've really learned about that LCI step is uh, there's a certain point on that where you do definitely have to physically drop it because it will not drop itself on your head. Check this out. And it actually, it threw me off so much. Like I've seen a lot of Moride stable steps with the zero gravity assist, not a lot of the LCI ones. And I came out here and I grabbed this thing and it hit a point where it just, it just stopped. And I'm like, uh-oh, something's wrong. But I realized that is all by intent and design. Their gas strut system has a hard catch point. And this entry door right here is the anti-slam Miss Piggy door so that the wind doesn't go blasting it in the breeze. Now, uh, <laughs> all the windows in the world over here on the door side of the RV, second power awning, lighting, but you can see all that stuff. That's not unusual. What you can't see is that I'm currently soaked to the bone, but neither here nor there. That's just part of the job. It's my own fault for leaving the umbrella inside. What I wanna talk you about here are uh, their, they call it their performance running gear package. So what it begins with are 4,400 pound rated what they call super G tires. Normally a G rated tire is like closer to 4,000 pounds. So this is about 10% more than that. Um, you've also got the Moride CRE 3000 suspension system. You've got heavy duty shackles holding everything together. Um, the idea here was to, to make something that was more reliable, that gave uh, cooler running temperatures to your tires, which is one of the main failure points of tires, mind you, and to um, you know just give you more peace of mind. There's also optional disc brakes available on these, I believe. Um, I gotta double check. You know what? I've seen so many RVs and I have so many new types of RVs coming at me. I kind of stumbled on that real quick. I'll try to leave myself a little note on screen to help uh, clarify. On the back here, 3,000 pound towing hitch with 300 pound tongue rating. And of course the four-way safety chain or uh, four-way wiring harness, not four-way safety chains there. Um, she is backup camera ready. But what I like is how they kind of prepped it for whatever camera you want. They're not working with a specific vendor and kind of shoehorning you or boxing you in. Some people prefer Halo View instead of Furion, for instance. They gave you that choice. And I mean, that's, oh yeah, here by the way, these are those little black wiper seal tabs I was telling you about. It's nothing fancy, but what these are going to do 
is they're going to make sure that those seals flip all the way out or all the way in. Because on a drizzly rainy day like today, if it half crimped a little bit, well, that could be a problem. The good news is there's always also a second wiper seal in there and an interior bulb seal giving you three points of contact. Holy cow, man. I didn't realize until I got on top of this, like I knew this location here at uh, Davenport, Iowa was big, but like, whoa, this is like acres and acres big. I didn't realize how big this place was. This is a whole operation. You gotta check this out. I've only scratched the surface of it. Anyway, up top here, speaking, you know what? We're gonna roll this. Speaking of scratching the surface, how about the fact they're using uh, a PVC roof membrane? That's one of those owner-driven features. They said, we want better stuff where you can do it. Um, the cool thing about the PVC is um, it uh, basically it's more reflective in the sun. It helps keep the RV cooler. It's also far more puncture resistant. So if you have like a little tree branch trying to scratch at it, it just doesn't cause quite the issue. Now, uh, up top here, you can see that, again, this was outfitted with the optional solar package um, along with that 2,000 watt inverter. Now, the funny thing is, most paradigms already have a 2,000 watt inverter even before that's, uh, that package is added because that actually comes included with their um, residential refrigerator running multiple outlets in the RV. And uh, again, you can see up here, you've got the Coleman uh, Mach Q series, the quiet series air conditioners. Once again, the bedroom ducted into the bathroom. And then you have dual non-ducted uh, airs over here in the living area. And you might be going, you know, why didn't they duct the air conditioning? I don't understand. And you know what? It took me a minute. And then once I had it explained, I went, oh, well, you know, yeah, that does make sense. And you know, certainly it's not to say that a, a ducted air conditioning system doesn't work. Like, obviously they do. You see them used all the time by everybody else. But like, I saw something totally different. I'm like, okay, sometimes different doesn't mean bad or anything like that. But like, wh why'd you do that? And um, so in the bedroom, it's ducted just to the bathroom because that's a very short amount of uh, length and they want to make sure that the bathroom stays climate controlled. Okay, that makes plenty of sense, certainly. And since it's really localized right into that one small room, it's going to keep up just fine, especially when that air conditioner doesn't also have to try to push air all the way back. And see, that's the thing. Let me get up here. Let me try not to like fall down and kill myself. This is one of their smallest paradigms and yet it's, it's still got a good chunk of length. Now, imagine the sun is just scorching and it's beating on the roof of this thing. Inside of the roof construction um, is where your air conditioning ducts usually run. Well, if that is a broiling hot box, then the cold air from the air conditioner is already slightly warm before it even gets down into the living area. So by non-ducting these, you take that link out of the equation entirely and you're getting more cold air in the living room faster. It makes a lot of sense. It makes a lot, a lot of sense now that I had it explained to me. But I get it, it's a little different. And here's a major thing on these air conditioners. They are uh, easy start power saver type air conditioners. You can run two of them on 50 amp service. Or no, 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 no. You can run all three on 50 amp service. Should have had a V8. Ooh, I had a little more stank on that than I mentioned. You know what? For the rest of my trip, I'm gonna have like a big red splotch on my forehead and now you're gonna know why. Um, but uh, you could run two of them on 30 amp service. That's what I wanted to get to. So like during the day, you could keep your, your living room super cool with both of them. Then at night, you could drop one down, kick on the bedroom air conditioner or something like that. Or you could do kind of one in one, whatever works for you. But you know, I've been to campgrounds where uh, you just pull in and you just pick your site and people with a tiny little 30 amp, uh, 16 foot mini camper eat up a 50 amp site and it makes me want to rip, rip out, out my, my hair, hair, but I can't. And I mean, it, this ain't feigned enthusiasm. I am beaming over here. I am so excited to see these things. My biggest regret is that they're so popular that here at the Iowa location that I'm visiting right now, I was like, yes, they're an Alliance shop. I'm gonna spend all week recording those. This is the only one they had left in stock because they're sold out of everything else. The week before I got here, they sold like six of them. <laughs> and this is this is all I could get my hands on for now. I already have made plans to visit another of our stores that carries Alliance so I can get you a couple more paradigms, some avenues, some valors, all kinds of things. So this is just step one of a lot of uh, more steps to come in our little journey together. And I, I gotta say, I see you Alliance, I see you. You know what? 
I see what you did here. You've done well for sure, and I I think you know that. You don't need to hear that from me. You don't. I'm I'm not a, an authority that justifies whether you did good or not. But it gets my stamp of approval. This is sharp. So folks, um, if you're looking for that last one, this might work for you. And if you're just looking for a little entertainment, make sure you hit that subscribe button and catch these things as we come out. And short of that, take care, stay safe, have fun, happy camping, everyone. Man, that's a this is a good day. Thank you.